Oh, I uh, remember the Just Plant Six, the Hillsborough campaign, and uh, uh, a school supporter as a Blackness construction worker himself. We followed by uh, Gail Cartmel, who's Assistant General Secretary of uh, Unite the Union and has been uh, a key uh, member of uh, that union's uh, battle against blacklisting. And if you uh, haven't seen her, her speech, it was on YouTube, which she gave at the TUC conference. It's, um, it's worth running out about that demand for a public inquiry because this is uh, an issue which demands that uh, public oversight. And on my kind of far left, merely a, a geographical indication as opposed to any. Uh, any kind of political uh, one. Uh, Chris Keith Ewing from uh, King's College in London and uh, Andrew Moretta from the University of Liverpool um, uh, bringing their uh, academic perspective in terms of a uh, legal issue. And Keith was the, the first to produce uh, the really first substantial analysis uh, of, of the Blacklist when it was discovered in 2009 when commissioned by, by UCAT uh, to look at the iniquities and, and has um, and written extensively about the, uh, uh, the rather lukewarm uh, legal safeguards that we have at the moment, and they'll be addressing some of those issues. So, um, we'll, we'll work in that pattern, then we'll do questions and answer, and then you need to make a note in your diary after the uh, session finishes uh, today, there's a party. So, you need to be there, because we're going to be celebrating the fact that this has been a fantastically uh, successful year, fantastically uh, successful campaign, not just uh, about the book, but the much wider way that it's brought in. And I'm looking at people in the audience who I know from different areas about how this has brought together people from many different uh, activist backgrounds and not just trade unions. And if that's one thing they fear, is that collective action across different areas and not just kept within one kind of sector. So they should be fearful of what's going to be said in this room today. And I think that's always a good thing. So I'm going to pass over now. Yay. <laughs> uh, thanks very much. Um, firstly, thanks to Phil for the warm introduction. Also, uh, I'm not having to give the obligatory plug to the book as well. Uh, I'm sure that uh, that'll be done plenty. Uh, during the course of the day and certainly tomorrow as well. Um, I, I know a lot of people within this room will know uh, about how the scandal broke back in 2009, um, but actually Phil put a lot of work into it uh, before the scandal broke and uh, absolutely fantastic. I'd like to go on record now uh, saying about Phil's work it has been absolutely brilliant in getting us in this room now because at the time uh, when people were talking about blacklisting back in 2009, I thought it was a myth. Uh, and just a, a load of mowing building workers um, that couldn't get a job because they were incompetent or they were troublemakers. So uh, if we can have a round of applause for this. <laughs> um, I think probably the, obviously I'm giving platitudes out to, to a couple of people here. Um, I, I've mentioned Phil obviously. But back in, in 2009 the scandal was down there. Now, at the moment, we've had front page exclusives in The Guardian and everything, and we've managed to drag it right up here. And I think uh, a lot of people can be proud in this room of that. Um, firstly, John McDonough, who spoke earlier on, again, I'd like to give a uh, personal thanks to him for being one of the founder members of the group. And, and certainly, it was heartwarming to hear about where he's going to take this when a Labour government gets retained uh, in the near future. So it's uh, that, that's absolutely fabulous. And that's it. Uh, play platitudes or, or great thanks to the Blacklist Support Group and, and all of the people around the country who've been part of that and, and as I say dragging it from down here to up here uh, over the last seven years it's been absolutely amazing it, it's changed my life um, when I got my file back in 2011 uh, on a building site over up in the Mersey I never thought I'd be here speaking about uh, Blacklist and, and, and taking uh, this to the courts and talking about public inquiries because at the time, um, certainly in the court, it, it wasn't the result that I was personally looking for, and, and probably a lot of people within this room know that. Um, I'm a Hillsborough survivor, um, uh, and I've spoken about this on a, on a couple of occasions, certainly this year. It's given me the power to speak about how Willsborough um, links in with Blacklist and, and all the other justice campaigns as well. Um, and I think um, the message from the Blacklist support group is that we won't just stop at the courts and, and a bit of um, compensation because it's never been about the money for me and, and certainly I don't think it's been about the money for, for pretty much all of the group. Um, just a, a, other people I'd like to, to go on record to thank would be United GMB uh, and UCAT who, who got on board with us certainly within the, um, the court cases. Um, people have said somewhat belatedly but it did need that push 
um, and I know it was pretty much a rank and file um, organisation that got it off the ground but we did need obviously the legal help um, of not just the union solicitors but also Cooney Clark and Ryan who I know have got representatives up here so I'd, I'd like to thank them for getting us pretty much to where we, we got back in May. Um, other people um, I'd, I'd like to thank is, I've mentioned the unions, um, and the other campaigns, uh, like what we're looking at here today, it's, it's not just a, a blacklisting conference, we've got uh, things on whistleblowing and bullying, and I think it's imperative, like John McDonald says, that we link all these campaigns in together. Um, back in January, I, I called something which was unheard of before, it was certainly unprecedented, and I don't know whether it'll be done again. Uh, I called the Justice Rally in a football match, um, because a lot of people within this room know a campaign on a lot of things around football, affordable football, through banks within the community and how uh, football organisations can help um, within their communities uh, for social justice and things. Um, Liverpool played Manchester United on January the 17th and I managed to link in that rally with the Oak Creek Truth and Justice campaign, the Hillsborough Justice campaign and also the Shrewsbury Pickets campaign and we had speakers at that rally and it was a very cold day and I think there's a number of people within this room who were looking at um, it was just about thawed out actually we got some music there and everything but we had fans from Manchester United speaking under the gaze of the cop uh, and it was well attended and it made quite a bit of press and it was at that moment that I thought we won this campaign uh, because here we were linking all people from all around the country um, I've got a banner there and we'll get it out again and I've often said this here um, what unites us is greater than what divides us uh, and obviously we had the, the massive victory um, in the courts um, subsequently later on. Um, other things which have kind of warm my heart is linking up with the other justice campaigns now obviously uh, we're here today talking about bullying and, and whistleblowing as well but certainly the Old Greek Truth and Justice campaign at the moment is, is gathering um, a lot of publicity um, the shows be pickets, which John spoke about before. Hopefully, uh, their papers will be, be released and not before time. And Hillsborough as well. We've got to remember that obviously that isn't finished. You know, we've, we've got the truth, but actually seeing people uh, being locked up uh, and being made accountable for what they've done it is certainly something um, that we need to see. And that really brings me um, to where I think we should be going with our campaign. And there is the public inquiry, and we've got to get in the same position as all Greek to some degree. And I think we've, we've got to start shouting from the rooftops and banging tables because, for me, there won't be any justice without those accounts being placed on the stand and facing jail. Thanks very much.